Hi, Dick Rochford here. I'm aboard the M600 Meridian, the new Piper Meridian. 600 horsepower, additional fuel, larger wing, more payload, and perhaps most importantly, uh, a brand new a G3000 suite uh, avionics, uh, including all the latest safety features such as the level button and uh, under speed, over speed protection, hypoxia protection, and uh, just a great, uh, very intuitive Garmin flight management system. And I want to talk a little bit about weather flying today. This, there are two uh, two events that are really still uh, still killing pilots, and that is uh, flying a perfectly good airplane into uh, thunderstorms and uh, large rain showers, and the other is uh, airframe ice, and sometimes both. Uh, so today we we've, we've got some serious weather all around, and uh, we know from the next rad, which is a strategic strategic tool that the weather is such that there's enough space between the cells that we can fly around them. Uh, we know they're tall enough that we can't get over them and the reason is we're looking out the window and they are everywhere. So even the ones that aren't quite up to 270, which is where we are, uh, still may have some energy above them and in some cases quite a bit. So the rule is if the tops of the cell are uh, if it's producing lightning, I should say, and any cell above flight level 250 in height, in uh, cloud height, is potentially capable of producing lightning. Uh, but if it is producing lightning, you want to stay uh, the number of the tops, or the height of the tops away in miles. So flight level 400, 40,000 40, feet tall, you want to stay 40 miles away from that cell. So the, the lightning is easy, it's just stay 40,000 or the tops away in, in numbers of miles. If it's not producing lightning, it's maybe a little trickier. You don't have to stay out of clouds at this altitude, you just don't want to fly in any wet clouds. And so you get a little bit of confidence after you fly a little bit about what's wet and what isn't. That one over there, the, for the highest one we could see at, at behind the dark one, that's wet. And we know that because it looks like cauliflower. This one here is less so. Uh, this one here is less so still. So you can see the edges of these clouds over here are coming apart. They're like getting uh, like torn Pop cotton. Candy, yeah, okay. So, that, you know, the, the geeksters yeah. call them uh, cumulus fractus. Fractured cotton or flat. One, two, fractured four, cumulus. Six, two, and then this one over here is the top of a ripped stork one that's probably mature. And it's probably wet in there, except for the very top. But there's a better chance that that one's got, still got some rising air in it, although it looks, you know, looks like it's mature. Uh, these out here, we don't know yet, but again, that, you know, it's it's looking safe. So all we want to do is not get the airplane wet and not fly in cumulus clouds at this this altitude. And that, to some extent, most extent, that's the same. So two tools that we have, other than the Mark One eyeballs. So let's say we're flying at night. We got we got the next rad. We can see it another 75 miles. We have uh, some weather there to contend with. Um, so 75 miles. We got this out to 80. Um, so by painting the ground in the distance, we assure that we don't overfly anything um, that's uh, water in front of us. And now uh, this radar is optimized to paint water. And yes, I'm well aware that will it will paint ground, but I encourage you not to use that feature. Leave it in uh, in the weather display uh, mode. Don't paint ground. And the reason is, is that, uh, two reasons. One, in the ground mode, you have access to gain. You don't have calibrated gain. This is true in the older radars as well. And you could then confuse uh, a reduced gain with a less intense precipitation. So just leave it in the weather. And if you want to look at ground, look at the look at the map. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. That In this day and age, we don't need to paint ground. 
So yeah, it'll paint ground, but it doesn't do it very well, at least not as well as your uh, G3000 FMS. So get over it. This is Dick Rochford flying safely. Beyond that, there is a moderate heavy precipitation, 12 o'clock, 6 zero miles, 2 zero miles in diameter. Um, uh, we got onboard weather. We're seeing it out our window as well. We might be above it. We'll advise if we need to deviate. Four hotels here. November 4, Hotel Sierra, roger.